Usually the general picture of Basler Fasnacht is that it's a carnival which goes on for three days. There is some music being played in connection with some drinking. But what does this cultural event actually involve and what are some do's and don'ts? We will look at the historical background of Fasnacht. Today we'll give you an insight on how this tradition is practiced nowadays. Firstly, you'll have to differentiate between the program during these three days and the different formations and groups which partake during this cultural event. First, we'll take a look at the different formations and groups. A clique is a traditional marching band consisted of drummers and piccolo players. A Kuka music in comparison to the Klicke is a newer style of marching band, which involves more types of instruments. Trumpets, trombones, sousaphones and different percussion instruments, just to mention some examples. A Wager Klicke is a group of people who build and decorate a trailer during the year. At Fasnacht they throw different objects towards and at the spectators, but more about that later. And then there are Schnitzelbank. They perform ironically sarcastic texts on current local and international topics. A different way of describing them would be old school stand up. <laughs> These are not all groups and formations involved, but they make out the larger part. Now let's have a look at the program. There is generally speaking day and night always something going on in town, but here are some highlights. The carnival officially starts at Morgenstreich. At the stroke of 4am on Monday morning, all the lights in the city are switched off and about 200 clique located all over Basel city centre start playing the same march together. The clique parade in the darkness for a few hours. This is a magical event and worth getting up that early in the morning. During Monday and Wednesday afternoon, there is a big parade in town called Gortisch. Here you will encounter the Klicke, the Kuka music and the Varga Klicke. The Varga Klicke usually throws sweets and oranges towards people. The famous Rappli, better known outside of Basel as Confetti, are thrown at people. But don't be scared, they only itch a bit, and to be covered in Rappli is part of Fasnacht. Fun fact, you will find half a year later or so a Rappli somewhere in your clothes or bag and have a flashback to the good times during Fasnacht. During the evenings, you might get the pleasure to encounter a Schnitzelbank. They usually perform their texts in the Klicke cellars, where the Klicke practice playing their instruments during the year. If you do not understand Basnacht, which is unlikely if you don't speak Swiss German, then this part of Fasnacht won't be as exciting for you. But the Glicke cellars are usually nicely decorated, cater food and drinks and are a good place to warm up if it's cold and rainy outside. There is an app where you will find the exact locations and opening times for all public cellars. Link in the description. On the second day of carnival, hundreds of children continue the tradition of taking part, individually or in groups, in a light-hearted parade. Tuesday evening is all about the Kukke Musik bands. At 6.30 pm a long procession of Kukke Musik bands that converge from different directions make their way to the Marktplatz or Barfüßerplatz. In the evening large stages are installed where the musicians present their songs to the carnival audience. Each clique carries a very large illuminated canvas lantern, decorated with paintings and rhymes that make fun of a particular sujet, which is a local event from the past year. The Laterne Ustellig is on the Münsterplatz from Monday evening to Wednesday morning for the public to admire the lanterns. There actually aren't any official rules on how to behave during Basler Fasnacht, but locals have some unofficial rules which will come to your benefit if they are familiar to you. Before the Morgenstreich, make sure you arrive early. By 4am there's quite a crowd. The crowd gets bigger the more you go into the city centre, so it's recommended staying on the outskirts of the old town. You won't see as many traditional marching bands as in the centre, but at least you'll be able to see them. The special element during Morgenstreich is darkness, so do not use flash photography or light any fireworks. 
Generally, visitors are advised to buy a fast ox plaquette, which is kind of a badge. Make sure your carnival badge is prominently displayed. It's a way of supporting the tradition, because the net proceeds from the sales all go to the participating groups to help cover their costs. The copper, silver and gold badges are sold by street vendors, costume participants as well as some newsstands. If you wear your badge, the chances of getting some sweets from the Wager clique are higher and the risk of getting covered in Rapli is slightly lower. If you are a spectator, you usually don't dress up, unlike other carnival events, unless you're a child. Painted faces, false noses, jester caps, body songs or extreme drunk behavior are all frowned upon. Musical instruments and other accessories are personal property and valuable items, so they are not souvenirs to take home with you. Do not throw oranges or other objects back at the participants or into the crowds. And do not pick up rapidly from the street, that's a big no-no. But not to end on a serious note. Some locals say they only really live during those three days of the year. The most important thing about Fasnacht is to enjoy it. Try and understand the political and social statements of the different formations. Enjoy the food specialities and have a drink with friends. Enjoy the incomparable scenery within this beautiful city. The whole city is in a cultural state of emergency for 72 hours straight. Soak up the special atmosphere and the chances of coming back the following year are pretty high.